What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Welcome to Saturday. I hope you're excited. We're taking another dive into the Kenwood THD75, but today I've got help. I've got with me Don, W6GPS, who's going to tell us all about the virtues of the new radio and then hit some of those finer detail points that I just didn't have the time to go into on the live stream that I did when I first was looking at it. And this is the right man to have on to do it. So you guys get ready for a good show and enjoy the memes. We'll be starting soon. Thanks for coming on out. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. Thanks for taking the time out of your Saturday to hang out with us talking about radio stuff. You know, I live, my body and my mind is in California, but right now my heart is in Texas, particularly Dallas, Texas, which is where I'm streaming through right now uh, via Restream. I was able to solve a lot of my streaming problems, so hopefully you guys should have a nice, solid stream because I'm now going straight to the heart of Dallas. Texas, that is, uh, to get my stream out to you. So hopefully I'm sounding good in the chat. And uh, feel free to hit me up with any reports as we're going along. I expect five nines from all of you. Anyway, let's dive right in because we got a lot of stuff to cover and we already used a couple of those minutes in the beginning. Go check out hamtactical.com, the home for the Ham Radio Crash Course merch store. It helps out the channel and the podcast that I do with my wife. In fact, she she runs this uh, with this uh, whole thing for it. Comes up with the ideas, the shirts, and everything else we put on there. So check that out. Link is in the video description for there. It is the Silverwood Lake campout. We already have a really good number of people. We have a group site, so we can take a ton of people. So if you're going to be in the California, Southern California area around Hesperia, or don't mind driving there between April 26 and 28, and looking for a good old ham radio camp in time, go check out the link in the video for that as well. So today, I've got Don Arnold. Link is in the chat and in the video description. Help Don out, by the way. He's pretty close to that lovely little YouTube monetization button that a lot of us uh, aim for. So it'd be great if we could bump him over the edge there and get him subbed up. So everybody go, while you're watching this, go ahead and bring his channel up and click that subscribe button. As you can see from Don's channel, he covers just a wealth of information on Kenwood radios, a number of other things as well, like getting you on the open spot, for instance, which is actually really, really easy to do. Uh, Don, I met Don at Hamvention. Well, actually, I think I met him before that, but we talked most recently the last couple of Hamventions, and we talked in Orlando. Don goes with the Kenwood booth, and I'll let him go into more detail on this, but he's the guy. When questions come up, he's the one, and in fact, does that does that like uh does that video look familiar? Does that Matt looks like a Glock Mac? Yeah, a mag Matt. That's a uh that's with K6 UDA. He was out hanging out with uh with our friend K6 UDA uh doing a teardown of the D75, which is a pretty cool video. So make sure you go check that out as well. And then last but not least, link is also in the description. If you have questions for the D75, and they may even let you talk about the D74 a little bit there too, maybe. There's probably an official group for that too. Uh, but go check out the link in the description if you'd like to join them on the Facebook group. That's really the place to go if you have specific questions on your new Kenwood, if you went out and purchased one. But I know a lot of people are in this chat. They're on the fence. They're like, I don't know. Do I want this new radio? It's a lot of money. I know it's got a lot of features. It's got those things I'm looking for. But they're not ready to make that decision. And so with that, we're going to bring Don in. Don, how you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm doing great. Yeah, look Thanks, good there. Josh. Look good in the home studio you got set up tonight for the show. Thanks for doing that. Oh, yeah. Well, I had to clean it all out all day today. I cleaned it out just for you. <laughs> well, uh, thank you. There's, no, You know, that's that's the hardest thing to ask a ham to do is clean up their shack for any person, let alone a show. So we, we thank you for doing that. But, but we know where everything's at. I know. Now, you, once you clean everything up, then you lose everything again. You got to figure that's out right. where you, every time. So, Don, yeah. you, you travel around with uh, Ken Wood to different shows and whatnot, and, and you're kind of there to, to be a, a technical whiz, right? Is that kind of is, – is that the official – title technical there is no there's no official title just uh me and phil are good friends uh in 4dro we're good we've been friends since the outbacker days if you remember the old outbacker hf antenna yep and then i moved to the av map and so there was av map and we had a parent 
And one day, Phil just saw me walking around carrying this thing. This must have been 20 years ago, 15, 20 years ago. And he says, oh, here, you could just do, demonstrate it here in my booth while I end up demonstrating the, uh, the D-72. Uh, then when they were doing um, revving up the uh, TMD D-710, I flew out to Tucson, met with the uh, engineer, gave them a couple of ideas. They used four of my ideas, and I nice. thought that was, that was pretty cool. So, so we've been... Uh, tight friends with Kenwood. I'm not an employee. I'm just a, an avid fan, uh, avid fan of their products. Yep. And, um, so that's, that's kind of where, that's kind of where I'm at. And, you know, that's a really good mention too. We should mention this right up front, guys. This is, this is fully an attempt to have you stick around and watch the entire show, but Kenwood has a bit of an announcement that, uh, Don is going to dazzle us with here at the end of the show, but, uh, highly recommend you join their Facebook group because they're, you know, potentially going to be seeking feedback from all of you. And Kenwood listens to the comments of, uh, all the, all the customers. So make sure you, uh, you stick around to the end because we got something fun to tell you, but we got the we got the THD seventy five right. It was hinted last year at Hamvention. We got finally got to lay hands on it. I was very excited to do so. And I know myself, you know, oh, there you go, there it is. Myself, I have the D seventy two, the four, and the five. But that's because I do videos on a lot of these different things, and so I get asked from you know hams that are like, you know, I can only really get like one kind of expensive handheld. What what is the major upgrades from the seventy four to the seventy five, and you know anything else you'd like to add to that? Well, unfortunately, all my notes just disappeared off my phone. So of course, uh, I'm gonna have to. <laughs> I'm gonna yes, everything. It all happens. Uh, first of all, it has a USB C uh, for charging, data transfer. It's a high speed. It's a high speed connection. Mm -hmm. uh, USB that has, that has a Digipeter in there, which is kind of a big deal. DigiPeter terminal mode, so you can actually uh, talk um, on a tablet or Android phone without a hotspot. Uh, dual mm. DV, dual dual DV receive, uh, so dual watch, so you can slick between A and B and, and still be in DV. Uh, it's a much, much, much more uh, uh, robust case. The case is got a great feel. It's actually made out of the same material as some of their um, EF Johnson uh, radios. You know, EF Johnson's part of J JVC Kenwood. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it is very, very, very strong, uh, very, very strong, very resilient uh, glass. Um, uh, it's got, of course, it's got Bluetooth. Um, it's got some uh, IF, some different IF things that you can plug into, some software you can plug into, and you can control the uh, you can control the radio uh, from from your computer. And uh, so uh, let's see here if you can kind of give me a fill in here. I will try to I will try to find this note. I I took a camera shot of this thing. Yeah, no problem. When you're ready, it, uh, I will yeah. mention while you're looking for it, Mitchell Pilot nine oh nine. Thank you for the super chat, buddy. I, I see you got a little game controller guy. Uh, maybe you all saw my live stream I did for the radio based Nintendo game, Full Quiet. Uh, go to that video and let me know if I should do more of those because it's a it was a quirky live stream for for sure. But yeah, um, I I so far am loving it that I can do like APRS on one channel and still have like D Star connected via a hotspot or. Uh, now I'm playing around with that Android DV stuff uh, via the app that, that Don was helping me out with. We'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, it's it's pretty pretty cool. There it is. There's the uh, there's the DV setup. So I'll give you the the punch in here. So you are using yeah. an app. What's what's the app called? It's called Blue. It's called um, the app is called Blue DV Blue DV Connect. Okay. And um, uh, it's a free download. Just go to uh, go to the uh, whatever the Android, what they call that Android uh, store, Go Google store. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, uh, go to that and just download it and um, do a quick se quick setup. Uh, I've already got this set up. I don't want to I don't want to go into it too much because we want we want to give you just a quick demonstration on but how the setup it works. specifically was just Bluetooth connection from the Android right. into right. the D seventy five. Yeah. Right. So let me make let me put my um, my D seventy four. So here's my D seventy five. I've already got it paired and I've already got it working. And when I key it up, um, testing one two three W six GPS. And for anybody that's curious, this is the HRCC uh, link. This is our HRCC D star reflector, which uh, it's right there. W six GPS. He's transmitting right now. It's showing. So yeah. You're making okay, it. Okay, so okay, so when you transmit, and um, also it, it, I'm in Chattanooga. There's a place I've filled it in. 
also i am i am sending my uh, gps coordinates so so uh that's kind of that was a, another new very high uh, uh I, new item was um was the fact that uh we now are can send our gps information over the d star network they call it aprs sentence it's not dprs uh, oh. <laughs> now all our i think that was uh Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. W6 GPS. Thank you very much. Anyway, uh, we're making our transmission and uh, everything's uh, somewhat working. Yeah. So to reiterate what Don was saying, he's not using a hotspot here. He's got the radio and terminal mode connected to an Android tablet, just a tablet that has Wi Fi connection. So via Bluetooth to the radio. Wi-Fi on the tablet, and then he can connect to the HRCC D-Star reflector, yeah. uh, which is right. really cool. That's super cool. Yeah, and so all you, and it's very basic. All you have to do is on the software is just put your call sign in, uh, get it all paired, get it all. That part of it is probably the challenging part. Any kind of pairings with uh, Bluetooth, you just have to, um, you know, get a cold one and then get it going. Once you get that part of it working, then basically, basically you just turn it, turn the um, uh, gateway DV terminal on, uh, what you do want to use is the uh, A band. I suggest that you just use the A band only and turn the B band completely off. But then once you once you get it and uh, you can make transmissions and also you can uh, you can QSY if I want to link to another reflector, I can go right to 30 Charlie if I want to. Oh, and it does it on the app. Oh, wow, it matches. That's no. I didn't the app switched well, actually, over. That's cool. Well, the radio is actually controlling it. Wow. Yeah. So, so now I'm on I'm on thirty Charlie. Let's see if I W six GPS thirty Ooh, Charlie. Uh, very cool. Quick radio check. See what we got. So for the comments in the chat, while we wait for you're sounding good. That's cool. Okay, real fine. Thank you. Just uh, doing a quick video. W6 GPS. Thanks for the quick check in. Yeah. So, so Ham Radio oh. Hobby is saying so, is it VoIP or RF? So, guys, keep in mind the, the, the D75 right. is still a radio, full sense, full stop. You can just do D star simplex if you wanted to. You could just do DV mode to another handheld, or you could go to a repeater. And that repeater could have internet connection, which gives you then, I guess you'd call it that VoIP over the long haul. But in Don's case right here, his tablet is connected to the internet. It's RF, right? It's not RF. What's Bluetooth? Bluetooth it's Bluetooth. Is RF. Bluetooth the, is RF. Whole... That counts. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's all I know, Bluetooth. But, yeah. but it's, it's Bluetooth. And, uh, and, uh, and this Bluetooth, and this Bluetooth, it's a fast Bluetooth. And um, so all the, uh, the uh, audio is being... Um, Encoded in the radio, the RF section's turned off, and uh, I don't have a Android phone. If you have an Android phone, you can pair it to your phone, have your internet connection, just stick it in there, and and um, talk forever because you're not using the RF section. So it, it's 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 the same way that you, that you would see what happens when you touch this stuff. Yeah, you got your camera on now. <laughs> so Don, Don yes. and I are both iPad users primarily, I think, and so we we we, uh, yeah. we fumble around with uh, Android, but see, the app's easy yeah. to use. Yeah. So so basically, reflector link to reflector. I'll go back to yours. Let's see if it's. I don't know if it's going to do it. Well, it's, no, it's still working. Yeah. Okay, so it's working. I just don't want to touch the tablet uh, because that I don't want to ruin the show from the, at the yeah, very beginning. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. That was already a you, you you've passed the first test with flying colors. Thank the you. first demonstration. Good job. Yeah. Yes, so I you. I think this is pretty cool because uh, so yes, of course you you guys all know I'm I love RF. I'm not a huge digital voice user, but we have the HRCC Voice Net, which I occasionally get on if I'm not shuttling the kids to and from Kung Fu practice or something along those lines. And so this is really nice because then you don't have to worry about necessarily having another device with you like a hotspot, which, you know, we love to. But if you have a tablet or your Android phone, you can do this with your Android phone, which is I didn't even really think about that. But, yeah, that has the connection already baked into it. So you're good to go on that one. That's that's pretty awesome. 
Um, let's let's talk. We'll change gears here a bit. All right. Let, while you while you yeah. change gears, let me get let me get out of. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So this is a mode you, you set when you're in the D star menu within the radio. So you got to make sure. See, in the upper right hand corner, it says term. That's to let you know it's it's bypassing the RF basically on the radio. So APRS, I love APRS. A lot of people do on the video uh, on that are watching us right now. Don, uh, what what I covered some of it on my live stream. Was there anything you wanted to add to that? Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, first of all, uh, again, I'm just want to. I just want to. I just want to put another plug in for our Facebook page. It's the official Kenwood Facebook page. Um, oh, my bad. Uh, if no, you good. go there. If you go there, we'll make you, uh, we'll, we'll make friends, you know, we'll, we'll friend you or whatever. But in, in this section right up in the section here, let's see if I can find it. There, I have loaded a file. Uh, yeah, it's let's right see. there on that ribbon to the left. It says oh. files underneath the, all those little circles. No, middle, middle oh, yeah, page. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. Right there. Um, I'm under pressure here. No, you're good. Take anyway, your time. If you, if you see this, no call default D75, if you, if you friend us, if you friend us and uh, go online, you could download that. You could paste it into the data file of your radio, and uh, or uh, I'm sorry, go to the programming software. If you go to the program, if you go to the programming software, uh, then what uh, what you'll be able to do is input it to the programming software. And there's four places where you put your call sign, and you're good to go. Of course, you have to be uh, registered with the D-Star network to make any of this happen uh, for yes. D-Star. Okay, so back to APRS. Um, we're not going to – I'm not going to uh, bore you with laborious uh, keystrokes entry. So the best thing for me to do is just kind of go down the list. How's that sound? Uh, yeah, that's fine. If you, Yeah, you're, you're looking uh, good there. Okay, so what we're gonna so so the first thing you want to do is put your call sign put your call sign in here. Let's see if I can get this just a little oh, bit. Oh, look at that! That's nice. Yeah. Looks crispy. Right. It's my brand new camera. Anyway, so you put your call sign. Use a dash seven. Now this is real important because not only does this information go over the APRS network. This is the same call sign. This is the same call sign that'll be used on the D Star network. So. Um, so you, you're, you're beaconing on the RF system, but every time you key down or change reflectors or do something on the D star network, your position is, is, uh, reported also. And so you get a really nice, uh, track line on, uh, if you go to, if you go to APRS.FI and just put W6 GPS dash seven and search for the last week, you can see uh, some tracking that I did. So that's real important that you put that call sign uh, with a dash seven. I put the Kenwood. Um, these, some of these are just defaults. Um, a lot of these are defaults. I use the B band. Uh, and remember that if you, if you um, use memory channels, and you're in the A band, and you want to go QSY to your APRS uh, activities. If you have your data band set to B, but you're trying to get it to work on A, it's not going to work. So you have to you have to bring that down to the B band. We commonly get questions about that, so I want to address that. That the um, the memory channels do not follow the data band. The 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 D seven ten did that. Okay. Um, this one's these are these are all basically uh, basically def defaults. Uh, TX control just to get things started. I put it in auto. Uh, please take it out of one minute because you don't want to. Yeah, you don't please. Wanna, <laughs> please don't please hog the network. So so just put a five minutes delay algorithm. You can leave that on um, and proportional pathing. And what that does is if you haven't moved a position, it's going to just kind of drop off. So you could turn that off. Let's just turn those off, and and that way your beaconing will happen all the time. Your position will be happen every time it beacons. Some people uh, will disagree on that. I turn the altitude on. Uh, I turn the altitude on. Uh, let's see. Uh, object one. I'm not going to get into that. 
So those, that's the QSY information. So if you turn all these on and you beacon, mm -hmm. and uh, especially there in Southern California, I used to live in San Diego, the big city of Poway. Oh yeah. If you know how to, if you know how to pronounce it, then then you you're definitely a local. <laughs> but uh, but it, it's not Poway, it's Poway. But anyway, you turn the uh, the QSY information on, and that way, uh, if there's a uh, you beacon and you or somebody beacons and you could see their you could see their um, their um, uh, QSY information. You can hit the tune button and you can go right to the repeater where they're at. Uh, let's see, uh, QSY uh, limit distance. I got it turned off, but sometimes you want to turn that on, and that way it just limits it to different distances so that you're not, you know, so that you're not getting everything. So if it's, if it's something you want to do local, you you can adjust that. Um, sure. Let's see. Go back to smart beaconing. Uh, I just take the defaults, and basically, if you change the transmitting method to smart beaconing, uh, I use smart beaconing when I'm in the car making movements and stuff like that. Uh, I just take the defaults. Uh, there are other algorithms that you can set for for like walking or biking, but for cars, I just take the the defaults. And then, uh, but you have to change the transmit method um, back in the other other menu. Uh, from from like uh, auto to smart beaconing, so those those are those are kind of the um, settings for that. Um, I use Kenwood format, Kenwood format nine characters. That's only if you're using a, a attaching a GPS, but uh, I don't think that that really is relevant. Uh, maybe if you have a, um, a, a program on a computer, but I haven't really gotten into that. Here's a message you can you can have phrases that you could set automatically phrases, uh, which is kind of good if you're doing an ISS contact and you do reach the ISS, you could send a message up and then and if it messages back, you can auto, it'll auto reply. And then notifications. Uh, this is basically uh, this is kind of cool. Special calls. So like my friend Ki4 Lex, he's he's a good friend of mine. If he were to send me a message and I have his call sign or whatever call sign in there, and that message is sent, the radio makes a distinct sound only for that, and it will voice announce his call sign. Oh, and that's it, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 like if uh, if um, if uh, Josh sent a message out to somebody to me, uh, it would make a, a distinct uh, tone and it would read it out. Now then. Here's a here's a, here's a here is a new feature is uh, DigiPeat. Um, this is this is kind of this is kind of the way I understand it is if you turn it on, it really doesn't do anything for you. But if you have if you are an outstation and you have it set correctly, then the handy talkie will act as a little repeater. But as it stands right now, it does not repeat everything. So there's there's settings in here. If ah. if you're really into APR, if you're really into APRS, uh, you're gonna you're gonna know how to set this up. It's it's but the average person, if they're not into APRS, um, the you know it's it's just, it's there for those that let's say it's search and rescue group. You could set it up to where if you're along a a, a path or in the mountains uh, up in Placer County, they use a lot of uh, digipeding. Uh, because uh, I think Placer is like one of the largest counties in the country. Yeah, it's and pretty so sparse too. It is, and it is sparse. So they've got like they've got little solar powered uh, digipeters going up there. And so if it's set up correctly, uh, your radio can you can hop, you know, make hops for your uh, your group. And let's see what uh, voice alert. Voice alert is is it's it's like a PL tone mm -hmm. for uh, for packets packets so if i turn that off right now and if i go to here here you can oh we just lost your video and what happened there you probably clicked a button that doesn't have a feed on it yet oh yeah hey we... yeah here we go yeah uh we're gonna we're not gonna transmit i think that i think the rf got it into uh got it into <laughs> cable. <laughs> it's good oh your rf got <laughs> See, yeah, that's gonna... exactly. That's this is exactly what happens what when happened. you go live. Here it is. That's right. This is what happens when All you right. go live. Unplug right, so... it, plug it back in, <laughs> or go back All to right. your other video. Okay, hang on. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what happened. 
Go get some RF chokes. Yeah, that's right. that's it on everything. Right. But I've had to learn that lesson doing all these live streams and stuff. I choke. Everything gets a choke if right. it connects right. to the so, computer. Oh, hang on. Oh, uh, who was it? Oh, sorry, Ryan Ranger. We got your question. Um, well, I might as well. There it is. You're back. See, look I'm at back. that. Yeah, now, now you, now you're truly a live streamer because you've you've that's right. <laughs> you've done a live fix. So good job. All right, let's get back to uh, where we were at. So, uh, voice alert, uh, I have turned it off. I've turned my beaconing off, so I'm not beaconing anymore. But basically, what that does is that mutes, I want to turn it on. It mutes packets. It mutes packets mm -hmm. un unless somebody is within simplex range and you hear that tone ah, well, then what you then what you then what you basically do is is um uh and if and especially if they have tune and it's simplex but if you hear that tone you can actually just make a voice call by keying up the radio and say w6 gps on uh, voice alert and then that person acknowledge hey you want to go to five two okay let's go to five two so that uh, that tone information does not uh, pass uh, through DigiPeters or I gates. Okay, so like a All local, right. almost like a local simplex. It is. It, it lets you know that the guy is close enough that you could call him on simplex. Exactly, and that's yeah. That that was something yeah. I used on the seventy two. Right. Yeah. Out here. All right. So that, that's basically that's basically it on the on uh, on APRS. Yeah. And like I said, if you go to the Facebook page. And friend us, uh, you can grab that file. Um, it's it's it's. Uh, I'm just going. to, I've got a. I'm going to switch here to. I'm just going to go real quick to. Uh, yeah, you, you blew through that pretty quick. That was that was fast. Okay. <laughs> Good All right. Job. So on on the programming software, I here's a a common question what people will ask is um, if you have a 74 file, you can open it up into the. Um, into the um hey look at that yeah that well we don't want to get into that one um if you have a 74 file you can open up open it up in the 74 programming software okay okay and then what you would do is you could just uh open it up and then highlight all these things right here do a control c and then you can actually paste it into the 75 program oh I, I didn't even think to ask that question, but yeah, if you're upgrading from uh, 74, you could copy over your memory channels. Yeah. Will this do? Uh, yeah. You'd have to do it per bank, I guess, right? If you had multiple banks. No, no, everything. Oh, hey. Okay, hang I'm on. I'm glad here. you let mentioned me, me, that. Okay, hang on. I want to try to. I want to try to demonstrate this. So, uh, you go ahead and uh, kind of, um, kind of take control for a minute, okay? Sure. It, somebody asked a question. What is the Android app? It's called Blue DV Connect. Free download on Android for your phone or tablet, but I really like the idea of using your phone for this. So you Android guys, you you got it made in the shade here if you got this radio because potentially you could be on the HRCC D Star reflector at any time uh, with the radio just by having it in terminal mode. That's pretty cool. So we're watching live live uh, live memory updates here from Don. Yeah, here we go. Let's see if we can. Jordan sends a super chat. I think that's a uh, one and one ninety nine pounds. I believe is that right? God help us. There is multiple Joshes. Help us. <laughs> yes, I, I took that full advantage of that. Uh, multi. -Josh okay, here situation. we go. Okay, all right, all right. we're good. You all got right, it. So here we got it. So here's what we have. And again, this is live with Josh as your moderator and Don as your feeble servant and talent for today. We're calling you the net control tonight. You're the net, net control, control for, the, okay. for this live stream. Yep. Here's 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 like uh, all sorts of stuff, and they're they're in groups, yeah. and they're they're uh, so you just this is just like doing a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. You can go up, you can go to the very, let me go back to the very top. All right, so at the very top, do a control A. Everything that's on that, everything that's on that, yep. uh, spreadsheet, so to speak. Do Let's a control C. Okay. Okay. Take our mega mouse over here. And we do a control V. Hang on. Do a control V. Stand by. Give me a drum roll. I I, I don't have are. I don't have drums. <laughs> okay. Well you you're did supposed it. to go. Bleh, bleh. All right. There yep. you go. So 
Here is our 75 profile. That's the only thing that you can cross over. That's the only thing that you could bring over. Okay. Now what you're going to have to do is is you're going to have to go in here and 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 you know, but but it's it's like really easy right now cuz all you have to do is go like GPS basic settings. Uh, yeah. APRS. Now you can just put put your call in here. So like in five minutes, you can get this thing going. You spit it out. You could spit it out. Mm -hmm. uh, you could save the file as a, a D seventy five file. Take your S. Take your uh, take the SD card here. Yep. Format it. You could format it. Take the card out. Put it in the computer. You can do a save as, and then you import it. Yeah, for a lot of the handhelds like the Kenwood, and by the way, everybody that's asking, yeah, the Kenwood is like one of the most feature-rich handhelds you can buy. And because of that, sometimes connecting it to the programming software and just kind of doing it all in one little hit is going to be way faster in a lot of cases because there's a lot to hit here, potentially, depending oh. on what you want to do. But you've got all the power with the software, which is really nice. AC0RB, well, thanks for the super chat. Appreciate you. Go ahead, Don. I was just going to say, you yeah. uh uh, just so you guys remember what I look like. Anyway, you got about three radio. You got three radios in here. Yeah. Okay. You well, got a yeah, D star point. radio. You got a D star radio. Actually, four. You got a di uh, analog radio. Uh huh. Actually, five. You got a shortwave receiver. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that's right. And, yes. And then, and and then you have a DV terminal mode. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then. On on this little rascal right here, on this and technically right too, because you have dual DV support and all that other channel that, stuff, right? That's right. All right, so so <laughs> double it. But if but if you go like here on the on the on the um, on the B band, and I click through here, I've got I've got AM, and it only does this on the B band. You got air, you have air, um, you could lower sideband, upper sideband, CW. Yeah, you could you could pick up two meter sideband on this puppy. That's, I mean, I, I know a lot of, well, we've got local guys out here. Of course we do, because California is the hub for this kind of stuff. A lot of guy we, a lot of guys use weak signal out here. They do nets. Yeah. So, so you've got, you've got tons, you've got, uh, you've got tons of radio out here. And, and uh, I've taken D74s apart. Uh, I'm not a repair facility. Uh, I've, I've fixed my own little boo-boos. I've fixed, you know, I've changed connectors. Um, I've, uh, Let's see what else. I'll change encoders, yep. you know, and 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 so I've been inside of the uh, I've been inside of the seventy uh, fours. Uh, hang on, just a second here. I got a couple of uh, since you since you mentioned uh, single sideband, uh, will it do shortwave receiver uh, frequency oh, or absolutely. shortwave frequency single sideband? There you go. Oh. Ethan. I knew the answer to that, I, but yeah, yeah. Good it'll to do confirm. shortwave receiver. Got to have a decent antenna. Sure. And then when you're in the shortwave receiver, it has I it has. Um, it has IF shift in there, uh, IF oh, filters. That's excellent. So you can so so you can throttle it down. Nice. You can throttle it down, and it's a, and yeah, you can monitor FT8. You can you can hear it. You know, you can listen to it. I, I imagine I probably would challenge one of your people to hook their radio up. There's a, there's a USB audio out. I hadn't even played with that. But there's a, there is a, a a USB audio out that you could plug it into something. Uh, now, I don't know. Uh, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, because that's the that's might be the missing link we needed for Vara. Well, I don't know. That's why somebody. I, I think you... chat has been talking about Vara. We, okay, chat. We we might have to talk about this on the after chat. By the way, after chat, guys, we're gonna do the after chat tonight. So everybody who has any kind of ham radio questions, it, up in in addition to the Kenwood, of course, uh, come and join course, us on the after chat. Link is in the description. You can follow us along there. I'll be live again. Go ahead, Don. And of that... course, our big announcement. A big announcement. Stick around Don't to the be... end. We're not gonna. The big announcement. That's right. So two things to hit really fast. Uh, will Blue TV Connect work with the D seventy four? That was just asking the comments. Uh, it will not. Oh. And the reason because the terminal, the terminal, mode. the terminal mode is is proprietary to the uh, seventy five. Got it. And, and that was and that was engineered both with the Japanese engineer and uh, Dave in the Netherlands. Okay. PA7, PA7, I, I, I drew a blank here. It, PA7, you know, Dave, Dave, the, I, uh, I think so. the blue, do, the blue DV blue guy. DV, the developer. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. And, and also, also you can, uh, I'm not prepared to demonstrate it now, Sure. but you can, 
use a Windows computer tied to uh, not Blue DV Connect, but their Blue DV for Windows, and use the USB port on the radio, and it w that will work too. Oh, cool! That's nice. Okay. I All wonder right, if so... you had the appropriate dongle for Android. That might work too. But you have Bluetooth. You don't really need it. But um, so, are you, are you ready for the next big question that that, that everybody yeah. wants the answer to? Oh uh, yes. We got do yeah. Do he he knows. He knows the question. So when when the radio came hold out, on, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Hold yeah. on. Yeah. Let, let's go. Let me, let me just. Oh, that's right. We didn't hit that. Yeah. There you go. Okay. These these are, these are these are some boards that I've been working on. Uh, first of all, I want to I want to tell you that the D seventy five is produced in Malaysia, where the commercial radios are produced. Okay. And their uh, quality control is fantastic. I don't have any D seventy five boards to show you. You can go look at my teardown video from uh, on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. But there is significant. Um, improvement on the actual construction of the uh, boards okay uh the shields are are different uh, when i it, it at first i had to look real real careful but you know they have built in a lot of quality uh in this and i know that 750 dollars price tag is painful but in 2016 the d74 I was listing at six seventy at six fifty nine or so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know we're almost uh, eight or eight years away. Inflation, we all know about inflation. Okay. Yep. So the difference between six hundred and fifty and seven hundred fifty is a hundred bucks. I think you're getting more than a hundred bucks worth of improvements is over the seventy four. The seventy four is an excellent radio. Yeah, Don't get me absolutely. wrong. Yeah. Uh, but they really, really put their heart and soul in the 75 and uh, the, the, it is more resilient. It is stronger. Uh, it is built very, very good. Uh, uh, and I noticed those when I took it apart. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, it's a lot of radio. I've been, I have been thrilled because there's, I have Kevin KI4 LAX, LAX is a, another beta tester and we're finding, we're finding all sorts of different little things that, that maybe people don't use. So there is a, a whole lot of features, very, very feature, uh, feature, uh, generous, generous mm -hmm. features. So, so, yeah. So I'm about to transition to the big question, but the there's a, question. there's a question leading to that question that just came in from Ron and see, I didn't even know this. Ron saying, does the 75 fix the charging problem that would kill the radio like the 7? I didn't even know the 74 had a problem. Is that is do you know what that is, Don? Yeah. There was there was there was a batch of bad ICs. Oh. Not okay. bad radios. Sure. And what had happened was people would use their their little charging dongle uh that's only like 300 milliamps and they would charge the radio, the battery would be dead. And then what would happen is the uh, the uh, power management uh, IC uh, would would die. I mean this this little this little IC is. Uh, let's see if I can. Oh, he's got it. I he got can, one he right can here. Point out exactly on the seventy four where the power heard it. Yeah, it's this little guy right here, and you have to dismantle the shield off here, and you have to get your uh, uh, hot air station. And uh, I've tried it. I got me a hot air station, but uh, uh, I just don't do it anymore because it's just it's just too much. Yes, the whole power management. Let me get you. Let me yep. look in the camera and tell you. Absolutely, the power management is fixed. Good, excellent. You could char you could charge the radio on USB C. You could run the radio on USB C. You can run the radio on 12 volts, so long as it's over 12 amps. I do it all the time. Um, another feature that I just thought of that that we were trying to, I was trying to remember, there's over 750 voice guidance prompts in the 75. Oh. The, the blind guys are going uh, rabbit over this. And I would challenge you folks, I have one, one guy that's totally blind got the radio and at the end of the day he had the voice prompt on he turned it on uh basically basically what you do when you uh 
when you turn the radio when you turn the radio on is I'm going to turn the radio off. Oh, you, you hit, showed it. Yeah. Yeah, you hit PF2. Turn, hold it in. Turn oh, the radio oh, on. Oh, we're secrets. This is secret codes here. This is Game Genie yeah. codes. And then what happens is connection completed. Okay. Whatever. Listen. VFO FM one GPS locked. A VFO DR use reflector direct. Wow. I had a long. I had a long, long trip. Long, long trip. And I basically was able to run the radio without even having to look at it. And my hat's off to those blind folks. One guy, I can't remember his name, had the radio for uh, probably eight hours and said he could he could do everything. That's awesome. Four, two, use reflector from repeater direct menu. Five, APRS, five, you know, zero, when five, we were... one, beacon, TF. You know the Sorry. voice isn't the voice isn't distracting either. It's a nice voice to go along with. Uh, with yeah, the radio. it's 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 great. It, yeah, it's not it's not it's not it's not a it's very very pleasant to listen to. Yeah. So when we were in Orlando recently, uh, that was almost the theme of the show was these really interesting products that people were bringing uh, that brought them to the show to to basically show people with you know different capable people how they can get on ham radio and Kenwood I know has always kind of been serious about having those voice prompts for a lot of their radios going way back so that I mean that's taking it to another level I haven't seen before oh, that's that's well, really well, good oh yeah listen to this hang on here one w a four h r two nine two zero three eight oh that's the APRS beacons <laughs> Two W four T I Y four time two zero three eight fixed direction three okay. W C four F M two time two zero three seven great that's, square. That, that's that's really kid. good. Okay, I, I saw the question, yeah. and you're going to get the answer here. So on voice guidance. Nine. 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 Nine, auto, one, auto, two, nine, one, nine, nine, speed, one, nine, Crank one, it up all the way. I want to see how fast it goes. One. All right. Nine, one, eight, voice, guidance, speed. How's nine, that, guys? One, That's nine, pretty cool. Five, nine, one, A, USB, audio, auto, nine, one, zero, balance. Nine, one, A, USB, and, and you know, even some of these features that you wonder what they are, if you hear what they are, you understand it instead right. of reading it. it. It's kind of, it's kind of freaking, freaking, it's, it's like really weird. And, uh, and now we're going to talk about the battery indicator. Yeah, icon. you know where I was going with all this. Right. It, let's right. get to it, so, John. Go ahead. All right. Drop the, all right. Yeah. So, so I got my radio. And I know from the past, the battery life is so short on the 74. What well, comes to find out there's a thing called battery break-in. Okay. Okay. Sure. Uh, Motorola, they recommend on their handy talkies, 20 to 30 cycles, fully charged, fully discharged. It's like breaking in a, a, an automobile. <laughs> That's correct. 30, <laughs> Three 30 oil up. changes, bud. Three That's oil it. changes. So... Uh, when I got my 75, that's the first thing I did. I just turn, I just turn the radio on, uh, charge it all the way up, let it die. When it gets below a certain uh, vo voltage, it disconnects from the radio. It will not discharge to zero. It'll disconnect from the radio. You charge it all the way back up, mm -hmm. and then you charge it, let it discharge down. And so I was noticing, oh, my icon is a. Uh, my icon, in fact, I can go to, um, hang on here. I'm going to, I don't have to look in the manual here for this one, but, um, but um, I was just riding along. Uh, yes, yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> I was, I was actually riding along and I had the battery status. I had the battery status uh, turned on and voice turned on. And all of a sudden it said battery zero. And I go, Man, I've hard, I've only been on for a couple hours. Battery right. zero. Yeah. Okay. Well, I said okay. So I set my timer. I set my watch. 
and cause I had a long, long trip and I was just going to, so I just let it set. And every now and I, I'd hit the, on the voice, on the voice prompt. If you, uh, if you hit the side button a little. Is it cause you're in the, you're in the menu? Yeah. No. If you just hit the side button, you know, you could, whatever's on the screen will give you oh, that status. Sure. Okay. So, so I was just listening to the battery status, the battery status and all that. It kept on saying zero. So I, yes. I set my timer. I set my timer four hours of zero. Then all of a sudden it said zero, 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 zero. Mm -hmm. And it got, it got more frequent. And then finally it said zero and then it died. And okay. I looked at my watch. It was almost four hours. So there is a, a bug okay. that they're addressing. They are working okay. to where they're going to have a better looking a better looking uh, display that's actually more accurate. More accurate, um, I think, is what. I mean, the display is fine. The accuracy is the is the question I think a lot of people had was right, like, and that's hey, going to be. Fixed. I've been on zero for three hours. What's going on, guys? You know, like that, well, it's, well, it's a valid question. Yeah. Right, and it gives you it gives you it gives you kind of a negative impression right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Oh my, it's it's not it's not dying. I get I for my test, I leave the display on full. I leave the. Let me give you some eye contact. I yeah. leave the. <laughs> Dive in there. <laughs> I leave the GPS. I leave the GPS on. Display on full. I beacon five watts every five minutes, and my radio lasts uh, almost eight uh, over eight hours. With everything kind of turned down, I get ten to eleven hours. Now that's going to be different for scanning, scanning, and uh, things like right. that. So a hit on that a bit because, I mean, g going back to the D72, right? I've got a D72. I love it. It's always had a battery life that is challenged when you turn everything on. So if you turn everything on, again, multiple radios in the radio, you're going to deplete it pretty quickly. And that's the reality for, I think, all handhelds that have a high level of features in it, particularly if you have like discrete components like a real TNC and a number of things at the D74, 2, 5, 2, 4, and 5, right? Or sorry, 72, 74, and 75 have, right? Yeah, right. So here's what I did is I I just put the, the battery level here, and let's see what it says. Battery medium. Okay, that was a brand new battery. And there's our APRS activity. That battery was brand new out of the charger just before we started the show. Mm -hmm. So it's not really giving me a good indication. Now, next thing it's going to turn or it's going to turn orange. Right. And then there's going to be a red outline and it's going to say zero. Let's see if, um, let me just see if. While he's mentioning that, I'm, I'm going to throw mine up for a second because uh, I've already, I was waiting. Don, Don, Don has been running the show with all his great visuals. But guys, the way I run mine more often than not is I run 12 volts into this thing. I have this connected to my power supply. Now, not necessarily transmitting at the same time, but when I um, when I need to charge it, I just go direct on the barrel connector and I'm, I'm good off my uh, standard ham radio power supply that I use for a number of my things. And it, it works great. It's, it's uh, perfect for that. Yeah. So um, the important part is you need 12 volts. Mm -hmm. I won't. Uh, the manual says it'll work all the way up to 17 or 18. Mm -hmm. um, I do have my Destructo radio that I've been told to try to break. Oh, um, nice. Oh, so, you send it to me. I'll so, break it. I'll be happy to break it for you. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, you know, the, the Destructo radio. Uh, there's the one that I took apart with Bob, you know, yep, yep, and we didn't yep. have the right soldering equipment. So I, I kind of, I mean, it, it still works, you know, and I got fingerprints <laughs> and then I, and then I, and then I, then I figured out that there's a difference between a Phillips screwdriver and a JIS screw head. Uh, th those are the Japanese standard, right? For yeah, for, yeah, oh, for yeah. crosshead. Yeah, yeah the, the Japanese are very precise with the, with the oh, quote unquote yeah. Phillips. Oh, yeah. It's it's a total oh, yeah. totally yeah. different thing. Yeah, th that's yeah, that's so, real. So so anyway, um, I don't know where I was going with this, but uh, uh, <laughs> where okay. was I going? Uh, we were talking about the power, right? The, the, you were going to break yeah. the, the. Okay, all yeah. right, all right. So I got the radio to break. So you know, when I get my radio 
my braking radio back. It's going to be, uh, uh, you know, it's going to be sprayed with water. It's going to be, uh, and I'll have a video of that. It's going to be uh, dropped. Uh, then it's, it's going to be, um, uh, the other thing I'm going to do is, is um, uh, the voltage range um, uh, is between X and X, and I will test those. Sure. Now, for, now for, the, uh, for the USB, um, you've seen enough of me, so uh, for the, US, <laughs> for for the USB, chat, yes, so for the USB, um, for the USB, uh, you need two amps uh, on your wall wart, two amps uh, USB. It does not support uh, PD mode. I've heard that term. Um, so oh, it you doesn't. Have like, okay, that's good. No. Good to know. Good to right. know. And then there is a there is a uh, there is a setting in there to where you can actually not charge the battery. Well, you say, well, why do you do that? Damn. Well, you're going down the road. You want to wear the battery down, folks, right? Uh, there's a couple of reasons, right? You could have a dirty. So if you know that your car, for instance, the USB ports put out a bunch of RFI when you're charging. Right. Uh, you may not want to charge it, and you may just want to use data connection or whatever on your laptop, or, or maybe your laptop creates a lot of noise when you're right. when you're pulling power off of it, and you may just want to pass the data over the USB and not not worry about charging. That's one yeah. reason. So, um, the other, uh, I do want to show you a little difference here. We got a um, number of questions too before we get to your pro tips here at the end, but uh, okay. you've, been, you've been very generous with your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, no problem. I do want to show you the difference. Uh, this is a seventy-four. Yeah. Uh, and there's a terminal connector. This little rubber thing right here is is real soft. It's now, not as big too. Yeah. Right. This is a seventy-five. They changed the configuration, and this is very very tough. Uh, very very tough. In fact. Um, and it's the right color. It's orange. Yeah, it is the right color, but um, if this is a this is a this is an old TK whatever, uh -huh. uh, it's the same. It's the same kind of concept, the same kind of construction. Yeah, and uh, and this commercial radio had that orange rubbery thing, mm -hmm. so so that that was a that's a big improvement. Um, do not try to take a, a seventy five or seventy four and try to put it in a seventy five case. <laughs> Somebody's already tried to do Please that. Please don't will, do that. <laughs> it will not. It will not work. Oh, no. uh, let's not make a Franken radio, guys. Let's. That's not right, a Franken radio. So. So is so there anyway. is there an IP since you have the case or since we were showing the case there, particularly that orange grommet? What's the IP rating on the seventy five? Oh no! Now you have to make me. I'm it, sorry. It's, yeah, it, it's it, same, it was a question same, that came in. It was the same as the seventy four. Hang on. Mm -hmm. It will take a. a it will take a rain spray, uh, you know. If there's a, sp a sprain of rain, um, now, now you've now you've got me curious. Uh, one of these no, no posters problem. in my uh, all right. One By of the these way, posters, guys. If you want to start it's... dropping question, put question in your chat. I'll see it that way, or at me, Ham Radio Crash Course. If you have a question for Dawn for more uh, clarification on the D seventy five. Yeah, well, it's it's the same standard as a seventy four. It's just cursory. If it's raining, it will work. It, sure. it, 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 okay, it's not like the Yesu where it's submersible. It's not. It's not that. Although I will try to destroy the radio uh, by so setting it in. Show the, show the right side really fast, or I'll, I'll do it on mine. Um, uh, there is something to note here: the I/O panel, if you will. There's a lot going on, and to be able to—that's where a lot of your ingress is. It's not going to be on the battery terminal. You saw that grommet that's on the orange grommet, but there's a whole bank of those, right? So there, this radio offers a ton of I/O, but that comes at a potential disadvantage that you're going to have ingress in different parts. And they do a pretty good right. job with these grommets. I, I was I was impressed with it, but still, look at all those options that you got there. And those are all potential ways that water can get in, and so that's why a splashable, like if you took a splash or maybe it dropped in a a shallow puddle for like a second you'd probably be right. okay but at the same yeah. time you know kenwood's probably not willing to make that statement but i'd be willing to say that i'd be okay if i dropped it i i wouldn't worry about it that much yeah well we're gonna do the drop test we'll do the drop test uh i've mm -hmm. already done the scratch test with my i took a 74 i took a uh, 74 uh, an old 74 screen mm -hmm. and my wife's emery board and i just rubbed it across the screen and it was all dull yeah uh, with the same pressure i went on the 75 oh. and there wasn't a scratch okay. and 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 i don't know if it's me 
Uh, I don't think I can feel the difference in the in the in the material, but when I had both when I had both radios apart at Bob's, I could squeeze the seventy four case and it did give. Okay. Squeeze the same pressure on the seventy five, it didn't give. Mm -hmm. I believe the case is a little bit thicker. Oh yeah, another big 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 improvement. And Michael. Uh, you no. The no, speaker. Well, there's, no, there's two big, yes, yeah. there are two big improvements. Yeah. Uh, the mic hole, and, and if, uh, if, um, if I had the picture, if I had the picture, mm -hmm. it has a little grommet around the mic. It's a different microphone element. It's the same one out of their commercial radios, but the little mic hole has a little rubber uh, seal that isolates the audio Going in, it goes straight to the microphone, and it's not colored by the case. The seventy-four, the microphone uh, is a is about is about the size of a, a eraser head, yeah. And it and it is subject to being colored in the, the case. And another big, huge improvement is the speaker is a heavier magnet speaker. It, it's a heavier, and also. It's set back about two millimeters inside the case, and and so uh, there is a, a better acoustic uh, properties with the speaker, and the audio is so much better on the seventy five than the seventy four, and that's because the seventy four speaker is right up against the cabinet. Uh, okay. They call this a cabinet. And uh, hang on just a second. That I can that I can show you. In my pile of my pile of of parts, I like which, that you have a pile of parts. That that shows <laughs> your real dedication to to I, I, to doing to this kind them. of work to help. The, I mean, your feedback goes directly in back to the company because of how much focus you have on Kenwood. So I think that's great. I I, I love that they do that for you. Yeah. I, I well, think it's, I was, I was it's gonna, good for all of us. Gonna, we appreciate the work you're doing. Sure, this is the other way to look sure. at it. <laughs> yeah. So it is. It is. It is. It is. It is vastly improved. And uh, and also, uh, if you can see this, uh, I'll try to catch the light. Yeah, I like the texturing. The the yeah. actual physical texturing when I hold it. Right. It's it's right. more. It's it feels like it's hold, you hold onto it a little bit better. Right. All right. And you and you guys that own a seventy four and don't have a seventy five yet. Yes. The battery charger fits all KSC 25s, no matter what version, will work. And the batteries will work. Uh, the battery is slightly more uh, on the 75. Uh, not, not, not like a zillion amp hours, but it is uh, better. It is better. Um, the, the, I'm, I'm kind of running out of things to talk about here. So it's no, we can start be... taking questions. Uh, we've got a ton right. of questions. So, for, so okay. a lot of this too, remember Don is kind of like, he, he does a lot of the technical, so not support, but the deep diving, a lot of this stuff and, and the beat and bash, if you will. So some of these questions I appreciate, you may not have the answers to. So everybody in the comments understand that too. There was a question that came up and, and I myself, um, I picked up an extra battery when I was in Orlando because I've been using the radio a lot. And it is a pretty expensive battery. Do you have any uh, knowledge about what the what set the price at that? Is it just because of inflation, or it's, is it, it's just actually a better built battery? Is it a larger capacity, or is it just something different about it? It's it's eighteen twenty milliamps. Okay. The seventy four was eighteen. Okay. Um, they they went to a different. Uh, I guess they went to a different manufacturer. But I have tested some of the uh, aftermarket batteries. And uh, they work. I just don't think they work as good. Mm -hmm. Okay. There is some. I did have a, a bad battery. You know, a battery I had for almost eight years, seven years, and I took my Dremel tool and opened it up, and there is uh, some circuitry in there. There's some balancing. There's some stuff that's going on inside the battery right. that I think warrants the expense. But you know, I don't have any. I don't. I'm not going to put down uh, the aftermarket battery guys. You know. You're gonna find out. You'll find out. That, yeah. That's that's how I put it. Okay. So, but I know the batteries. The, the batteries are expensive. Yep. Um, any any uh, any company, whether it's Icom or Yesu, their their accessories with their brand on it.
has to meet a certain standard yep. and it has a certain price point. Yeah. Ask me how I know, but yes, you're, you, everything you're saying is true from my experience. So question for your destructive test. So this guy's already got some ideas for you. Maybe test the radio in extreme cold. My D74 will not transmit unless it's above 45 degrees. Radio doesn't function until it's warmer. That's an interesting one. Yeah, I think 45 degrees uh uh, I, th I think it's actually I think it's actually uh, much lower than that. 45 Fahrenheit seems pretty high actually for the radio to not work. So I, I you, there might be a problem with your radio there, ham without a plan. Uh, by the way, there's some questions in the chat that we'll be able to take in the after chat for as far as size comparisons and other stuff like that. So again, join us. Link is in the description. I'll be live again shortly after we're live here, and we'll be taking questions live. We'll, we'll of course try and hit all the D75 questions, but um, we're, we'll we'll mix it up a little bit. Okay. All right. So. Uh, so this is one that I don't think is Kenwood's issue. It's more of an Apple problem. Question: Will it Bluetooth to Apple? It will not. Yeah. Okay, and um, it will not because uh, Apple uses uh, Bluetooth, low energy efficiency. Right. Blah blah blah. The uh, Kenwood uses the Bluetooth Classic. Uh, from what I understand, I could be wrong. Uh, you need that high speed, high energy to make the DV terminal work. Right. Okay. And so that's, no, yeah, that's, that, what that's, I would have. that's my, that's my understanding is that, uh, so there, by the way, there, there is a video I'm working on and there's hardware that's available. Uh, you can make a dongle that will plug into it's, it's one or the other. I don't remember if it's a radio or if it's, I think it's the, the iPhone that will allow you to Bluetooth to it. But that's an Apple thing, not really a uh, Kenwood thing. Because, again, they're pushing a lot of data. To be able to do voice in terminal mode like that, that's a huge amount of data over Bluetooth, and, and low energy is, is not going to be the way to do that. So just keep that in mind, okay? There you go. All, All right. right. All right. Uh, good question from Mike Kennedy. Can, uh, can change the data speed to 9,600 BPS? So... You can do 9,600 BPS on 440 and higher, or the 70 centimeter frequency. Can you do that on two meters as well, now that we have that symbol rate limit removed? Is that something that's possible? Uh, yes, I believe so. Okay. And if not, you know, that could be a firmware update. Well, the well, they, they also they also uh, use 9,600 uh, APRS uh, a lot of in the, uh, the uh, Northwestern territory, you know, Northwestern United States. Um, they use... Um, 9600 baud packet speeds sure yeah okay. yeah i'm uh, trying okay. to bring up i'm so trying to bring up on, a spec sheet over on twitter formerly or, or formerly twitter known as x question can you add analog repeaters to the dr mode like the ic52 which i am actually capable of answering this but don go ahead uh why don't you answer it? Because I, I believe it's no. No, so it's not. Uh, so if you go to the website dstar-info.com, you can the 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 D seventy five shows up as a list of downloadable repeaters, and you can download that file. You can add it to the radio, and then it will use that to search through its list of known repeaters. And then when you are in DV mode, um. And the D, specifically the DV mode where you bring up the, the special DV menu and you can hit scan and it will use your GPS to show the local repeaters in your area. So, yes, the Kenwood does do this, which is fantastic news, because that means you also are searching analog repeaters oh, while no. also switching DV mode. Hold on. Yeah, it cannot switch. It cannot search analog repeaters. It only is doing the DV repeaters. I yes. might have to test and this. It, I might have to look in this in the afternoon. No, it, no, it's and and if anybody has a solution to it, I'm I'm all excited about it. But no, it does not do it like the ICOM, where you does, can just download it off of D Star Info and copy it over. Because I right, did that, right. and it does search. Okay, the, okay. No, but, it will search the the D Star repeaters. Okay, and the D Star mode search nearby. And, yeah, uh, I can I could show you that right here. Uh, in my, I hold that. Let's get to the camera here. Get rid of this guy. Hold it down. Mm -hmm. And uh, nearby repeaters, 
and it's searching. There's my repeater. That's a data. It's away. got the Bravo. Yeah. Right. And that's a date. That's a data, but not analog. And I'm, I, I know that is a, that is a big, big item. It would be nice. Uh, yeah. And that's, that it's a, that is one advantage to using the uh, RT systems. You can import a uh, repeater list, analog list. And so, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's kind of, uh, that's kind of a good. That's kind of a good thing to have. Uh, I, it just doesn't. I have to figure out what I did then because I was definitely scanning through the list, but I I'm not sure that it was analog. So I'll have to do that in the after chat. We'll try and test that live. That's a good one yeah. for the after chat guys. So join us over there. All right. So let's see. Continuing down the list. This is again probably something that you may not be able to answer. But uh, so I take it Kenwood is committed to ham radio. I was under the impression from QRZ that Alinko and Kenwood was getting out of the amateur market. Don, what do you think about that? Uh, I can tell you. He's, he's getting it. Get in there, I Don. Get in there. You, <laughs> I can tell you. Is this where we're going to make the announcement? Uh, you know what? This is probably a good time. Let's do that. Cause I mean, how much time you got? I man? Cause tell we still you. got some questions. Are you willing to hang out a little All bit? Right. Okay. Yeah, good. I'm willing All to right. hang out. All right. I want to tell you, and you heard it here first on Ham Radio Crash Course. Kenwood is working on a new mobile radio. They are committed to ham, the amateur community. And they are now working on a mobile Kenwood ham radio. Excellent. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. And, and, you, and you heard it here first. Well, thank you. Join the Facebook group because, as Don was saying, they're actually seeking your feedback in what might be a feature that you like. And I'll be the first one to say, uh, make an updated version of this. <laughs> <laughs> that's what oh, we yeah. want, guys. That's that's what we want. That's what we want. Right, Don? This is what we all want. Right, all we right, want so, this. So, <laughs> new. All right, new so, now, this. So, now it, so now we can say, do you want DMR? Do you want C4FM? Well, I, I, want... I want APR. I want a good APRS mobile like this one. That's what APR. I want. <laughs> what is it you guys want? You know, we think we know what you want, but all I can tell you is they are working on a mobile radio. I, I like Don yeah. before we went live. He said, uh, you know, we're going to we're going to do this announcement. And then, you know, in typical YouTube fashion, if we all want to speculate about what we can possibly do, we're down. Right. We want to hear that. So, yeah, guys, join him on the Facebook page and then hit him up with some comments there. Yeah. J uh, Jody's already in there. OLED HDMI output. Low. <laughs> Please no. So, so maybe make it <laughs> again. Jody, join, join the Facebook group and send your feedback there. Oh, man, the chat's going nuts right now. Full duplex. They want full duplex and APRS. Ham without, uh, yeah, there you go. So number of things. So there you go. All right. Like it. Yeah. Well, like thanks. I said, all yeah. I can tell you is they're making a, a mobile ham radio. They're making a mobile radio. That's excellent. That's Any great features news. or anything like that, I don't know. I honestly don't know. But I, all I can tell you is they're making a mobile ham radio uh, from Kenwood. Yeah. JVC Kenwood. Excellent. Jordan Brown, thank you for the super chat, man. You've sent a couple of those this uh, this show. We really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, let's go back up. Got a couple more questions to hit, and uh, that might be it for us. So, okay. Is it public knowledge or shareable as to why they haven't brought back full duplex from the D72 in the D75? Not, uh, not a whining, whining ask, just curious. Yeah. Okay. That's a valid question. Sure. And folks, listen, we could do anything you want. We can we could put this, we could do that, we can add duplex, we could we can uh make a you know, a quad band. We could do all this stuff. But it costs money. Sure. And duplex duplex was very exp is going was going to be very expensive. That this is my own personal opinion. Because the price point is is high. And sure. yeah, yeah, I, I listen. I listen. Everybody wants all these blue, uh, all these uh, um, DV or um, cor correction uh, Bluetooth profiles. Well, those those things it costs money for those things. Mm -hmm. And I, so, 
It's a good, yeah, I mean, it's they, a good, you, you've got the a la carte model in some cases with a lot of these companies, because again, Kenwood's listening. So if we show up and say, hey, we want APRS, we want D-Star, or pick your fl- favorite digital voice mode, and we want full duplex. Well, you're going to walk out the door with a thousand dollar handheld at some point, right? Because but, if you cram it all in, not only do you have the difficulty of cramming it all in, but you got to make it fit. So the engineering and development that goes into making those boards and all those components work together is incredibly costly, difficult to do, and you're going to pay for it as the consumer, right? So you, they got to know from the consumers what they want to buy, right? Yeah, and and just just think about the, how many of you remember the the TM seven forty two tri band mobile FM, maybe even before your day. I think it might be. I think it might be. Yeah. Cause I don't remember this. Okay. That thing you could plug in like a 10 meter module, two meters. You could do all sorts of stuff. You can, you can three bands, you know? Yeah. All right. Okay. That thing was going for, yeah, it must've been like $700. And this was like 25 years ago. That's all right. Big money. They're on. Yeah. All right. Well, well, they're on eBay now for 1200 bucks. Yes. So, those radios, it, hey, they, they hold it, their value. That's true. Hang on. In the Orange County EOC, they've got dozens of them. Really? Dozens. Somebody needs to make an offer. Oh, yeah. They, 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 you go on eBay, man. They're, they're, after the, they're after that 742. I had one, and I, I sold it to a friend of mine for like $300. Oh, he got it. He, 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 would, he, would he would not give it back. <laughs> So question on, uh, so Jordan's asking Linux support, Linux support. That's more on the application side, I assume. Linux is fairly, um, they'll, they'll take almost anything that you connect to it, right? That's been my experience. I guess I'm, I'm not, that's a Kevin question. So if you want to, if you want to contact Kevin, uh, Kevin at uh, Bravo India, Mike India dot org, Kevin at BIMI dot org. He is the computer expert as far as our, um, our, um, um, beta test team. Okay. You know, I'm the cheerleader. He's the tech, really technical guy. And I'm, I'm kind of the, more of the cheerleader and, and try to help everybody oh, you're, out. You're That's more kinda, than that. You're more than that. Yeah. But you, you so, did ask me to not let you forget something. How should people contact you if they want to message you directly? Okay. Yeah. Um, you can go on, you go on the Facebook and I'm Don Arnold. I'm in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, you could send a, um, you could send me a private message there. Uh, I'll look at it. And if you look honest, I'll uh, friend you. Uh, you can also email me at W six GPS at yahoo.com. I okay. check that daily, but it doesn't go right to my phone. I have to like check it. Sure. Then I have my private email and only Josh has that. So that's it. Cause yeah, he's, that's he, it. he's, he's part of the in group. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, thank you very much. Yeah. Question from James Hannibal, our friend, Quirky QRP. Does it have position ambiguity for APRS? It does. Yes. It does. Yes, it does. Okay. And 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 for all you highly security Which, conscious people. Well, no, I, I do it because when I live stream, I, I will dox myself if I don't set ambiguity up. Yeah. And then I get uh, pizzas delivered see. to my house. Yeah. Um, That's happened. Hang on here. Position ambiguity. Uh, yes, it does. It does have it. I, I just have to. Yeah. I just have to find it. So it has, uh, it has a, there's a really it has good ambiguity. There's a really good question from Jody uh, there. So people are already going out to join the join the Facebook, which is awesome. But Jody is clarifying the Facebook link that we provided everybody is for the D75. Do you want them to put their mobile suggestions in that Facebook group? Because that for right now. Be. Yeah. Oh, for right now. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you know, when things when things become more uh public. Yeah. And again, the only thing that I know is they're making a mobile radio. Mm-hmm. That's all I know. Don't ask me well what about the features cuz I don't know. Yeah. All right. Jordan but Brown. That, oh, go ahead. That's kind of that's kind of our that's kind of our group to communicate with. Excellent. So so if if it goes a little bit outside the D seventy five, no one's going to get upset about it on the Facebook. No, like. no, we'll we'll, we'll 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 just say okay, we got it, we got it. Stay tuned. Whenever we make an announcement, then we'll we'll move on. Okay. Maybe down the road, uh, start a mobile Facebook page. You know, something like that down the road. Yeah, 
I like it. That's kind of down the road. Jordan Brown, thanks again. New super chat. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Uh, Ron Clark says he is APRS, which is not true. I am APRS. That is completely false. You're, you're incorrect about that one. But thank you for your comment there. Uh, the geekiest guy became a member. We appreciate that. Um, and for questions that are outside Kenwood, please join us on the after chat. It will be a live stream that I'm going to do after this one and uh, join our discord because then you can ask me the question live because I generally need to ask you follow up questions, particularly if it's like, what's the best radio that I could get? The geekiest guy member for six months. Appreciate you. Pre that's uh, super awesome. Um, the so it says the D75 Pro Max as as uh, as Apple users, Don and I, the Pro Max, we're familiar with that concept. We yes. need a D75 Pro Max. Jordan, thank you for joining. Appreciate it. Uh, we, we got a super chat with recommendations for the mobile radio from my friend Corpse a lot. He's asking for good selectivity, C4 FM, so bucking the trend, and a decent hand mic with a good build and weight. Because he may need to defend himself with the hand mic potentially. I don't know what he's going for there. So thank you, man. I appreciate that. Uh, and Gray Man Poto with six months. Appreciate you joining us uh, on. The, yeah, man, I've been watching your videos too, and and thanks for your video on hammers recently. Uh, I've got news. By the way, I've got news for hammers. If you want to join us on the after chat, we'll be talking about hammers a bit uh, towards the middle part of the show. So appreciate that. Uh, I think we got through all the questions. Don, do you have any hot tips that you would recommend for anyone to do that we didn't cover on this live stream? Which I again appreciate you almost an hour and a half uh, almost here. So. Thanks for taking the time. All right. The hot tip is, number one, do not get overwhelmed. Okay? It's a big You're manual. Have, <laughs> it's a it big, is a big manual. manual. It, it can a, look overwhelmed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But lo lots and, of pictures, and, and lots then, of how-tos. Yeah. 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 You're going to have to print that, download it, and print it. Okay? They have, they have a, a little manual that comes with a radio, but the detailed stuff uh, the de detailed stuff is um, is a uh, you have to download it. Uh, you can use it to search. Um, don't get overwhelmed. Uh, number one, if you're new to this radio, uh, look at the videos. Look at the videos. Uh, go to my YouTube channel. Uh, a lot of the things that are 74 uh, cross over to the 75. Um, Try to take baby steps. Uh, if you start getting a headache or an aneurysm, you're just going to have to quit. Uh, that's the number one thing. I'm still learning things. I'm learning things from Kevin because he he has a different perspective on thing on on things. Um, um, I, I I would just say uh, take your time. Take your time if you're new. Uh, if you and I'm not. I'm not. Uh, bashing any of the other uh, manufacturers, but if you gave me uh, an ICOM or a Yesu radio, I would be stumbling. And it's just because I've been a Kenwood guy for so long, and their interface is very, very similar. If you gave, if you get gave me, a, I haven't played with a 2000 in five years. If I had a two, TS 2000, I could figure it out. I have an 890, and the menu structure is very, very similar. So I'm used to that. You folks that have ICOM radios, uh, you're used to it. I've I've played with them. It's not that they were bad. It's just that I'm not used to the interface. So the main thing is is to be patient. Get you a cold one. And and, and <laughs> the best and, answer ever. That's I, I'm on board, Don. You, I'm with you 100 percent on that one, buddy. <laughs> yeah, you got it. And and if it gets to where you're frustrated and you're gonna you're gonna kick the dog or the cat or throw the radio down the tubes. You just remember, it's 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 just a radio. It's just a hobby. And yes, you want to do so much. You want to do so much. I want to tell you when I when I got the I got serial number four on the D seventy four at the Huntsville Ham Fest when they first came out, and Phil said, "Here you go." I didn't even have a manual. And oh, and boy. after the after the show on Saturday, your head hurt. I was up till midnight. <laughs> I was up till midnight. Up to midnight. But you know what? What got me excited was, is I was able to get on onto a um, the one Charlie, and I talked to fifteen countries I've never talked to on the HF. So don't don't poo the D Star, don't poo sure. digital. Yeah, 
it's it, we're all it's it's a way of getting us together and we're communicating and we're experimenting 100%. and so so i would just say um take your time uh just just real quick uh josh let me just tell you the key thing to remember is on wherever wherever the cursor is and let me get my little pointer wherever the push to talk is right here that's what you're controlling on that band right remember on the b band you can only the, the b band you can do digital am sideband upper sideband cw and fm okay mm -hmm. so just remember that uh, one, once i had i had like the i had like uh uh I had the AM on for some reason when I was goofing around. It was just making this noise, and I was, where's this noise coming from? Yeah, what's all this and, stuff? Yeah, so I just end up resetting the radio. So so don't, be patient and, and look at the um, – it, there, it is a screen. It's not a big, it's not a huge screen, but there is no. a lot of stuff in there. So you really got to right. pay attention to what you're doing. That and, is true. And, I will, and I will tell you, I've taken this at Quartz, at Quartz Fest – in the brightest Southern California sun, and you can read this with no problem. This is the same. This is the most expensive part in the radio. This is the same display that's in there, like their NX five thousand series. Oh, the and, commercial uh, radio stuff. Oh yeah, the yeah, first responder and, radios. Yeah. And what do you know? Hang on here. What do you know? I just happen to have one. You know, right here. Oh, <laughs> this is it. This is it. How do you? Even, this Look is a that. spare part. Brand just new. In case. Brand new. Brand yeah. new. But but I mean it's 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 an expensive part, and it's and it's crystal clear. It has great acuity. Um, so uh, anyway, anyway, yeah. uh, the, the, the other thing is there's primary there's primary um, feet uh, primary functions, and those are in white or or big case. So if you hit list, there's the list. If you hit tone, you got to back out. Got to hit list again to exit out. If you hit tone, you have to turn the tone on. Yeah. But once you turn the tone on, like there, then you go to function tone, and then you select it. And, and I had the most awfulest time without a manual, but but they they've really they've really laid this out pretty smart. Um, you can group scan. You can scan the whole, your whole memories, or you can group scan. Um, but but if you you just have to understand that there's there's a primary uh, list of, of functions and then the secondary is when you hit this little F button right here and then it, and, and on the 75 it's blue on the uh, 74 I believe it's yellow and so yes. and the other yeah. thing and the other thing that uh, you know the power is um, you hit function yep and then you then That's you it. can see the their little M that's another thing that just just kind of caught me off guard. But see, for for like hotspot, you can go like right down to super low power. Um, I just happen to have, I just happen to have here. I'm going to go to my hotspot list. This was another feature that. Oh was wow! Oh, I didn't know this about is this. Dedicated. This That's is dedicated. Cool. All right. So if you if I hit menu, hang on. If I um, go okay. to my hotspot list. I go right here. I go oh, right there. Wow, that's cool. And then, and then I have my open, my trusty little open spot right here. You know, I can actually go in here and um, let's go back to uh, see if we can go right here. Yeah, let's see, he may be asleep. Yeah, I think he went to sleep on me. Uh, uh, I think um, you're on the top. PTT is on the top. Yep, there you go. See, there you go. Hang on. Now you got to go back to memory. And uh, MR. Yeah, whatever. Uh, see, even even experience. See, we're doing it in, live. We're doing it live. That's when it gets that's you. Right. Yeah, it's all that's right. A, it's yeah. all right. I know where you're going. Hold on. All right. Let me go back to. Link reflector. I love that voice thing. That was a uh, really cool. Yeah. Well. I think my open spot just kind of went to sleep on me. Anyway, so 
Oh, you're on. Uh, I, uh, somebody said in the chat, you're on uh, 621 Charlie, not 621 Alpha. But it's. Right. It, it, I think everybody knows exactly what you're doing. You're you're right there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, while you play around with that, I want to hit a uh, super chat we got. Jordan Brown, thank you so much. Massive thank you to Don for all the answers to all the questions and show and tell. Yeah, you did a great job, Don. This is awesome. Thank you for that. And uh, I'll say, you know, I, I, I think um, I think the, the general community sentiment, from my point of view, is, you know, sometimes Yesu and ICOM is like Pepsi and Coke. One likes one more than the other. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But I think Kenwood, everybody likes Man, Kenwood. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a brand that most people have a radio from and it's an enjoyable brand with lots of different reasons whether it's vhf uhf or hf and i frankly am just glad that they're continuing to be a player in in our amazing hobby and and service and so i'm i'm just glad to hear the news about a new mobile radio i think that's awesome so yeah and and don thank you for taking the time this has been amazing um anything else i think you got those are some really hot tips uh ham radio wilderness with frank he asked, uh, will it transmit in lower sideband or upper sideband? It will not. Yeah. Just receive. Yeah. Just receive. And uh, Corpse Lot, my buddy. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for the live stream. And Don, for doing it live. You did it live, Don. You did a great job, man. <laughs> I got to get you. I got to go get me a cold one. Yeah, you should get yourself a cold. I I think I've had one or two cold ones since we started this. So <laughs> I very much appreciate you taking the time. If you want to hang out, we'll chat after the show. But guys, I'm going to wrap up the show. Okay. So Don, uh, any la anything you want to mention before we go? Uh, I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay hooked up with you. I'm going to go get me a cold one. So um, go ahead I'll and grab it and come on back, and then we'll talk. Uh, okay. Because my my throat is dry. I, I I'm so. with you, man. I, I I like it. All right, <laughs> take it easy. I appreciate it. All right, I'll be right back. Well, that was a lot of fun. I, Don's a great guy, and he's a wealth of information. So avail yourself of his YouTube channel. Not only is he you know out here on the live streams, which is great, but he spends a lot of time on YouTube making videos as well. And he's very focused, right? He's making videos for this radio. So if you go to the link in the description, you can subscribe to him. And again, shout out to Don. He's at the point where he's going to get YouTube monetized, which is kind of a big achievement for a lot of people. So help him out there if he hasn't already achieved it. In fact, we should we should do the live check on this. Let's let's see. Let's let's do this live. Where is he at? OK, so he was at, at 5132. Let's see where he got from the live stream. Or is that updated? Is it refreshing? We'll see. 5136. So he picked up possibly 400 subscribers. Wow. Thank you, guys. That's really awesome for you doing that. I, I really do appreciate that. Thanks for doing that. Again, links in the description. Help him out. All right. I had a lot of fun with this live stream. It, it is oftentimes really great to have another technical person to be able to, well, and he specifically because he, he knows all about these radios. So that was really cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. With that said, we're going to wrap up this live stream, and we're going to do the Discord after chat. It's still a live stream as far as most of you are concerned, but we're going to be on Discord, and that allows us to talk to you directly. And that's kind of important because ham radio is a very technical hobby where your questions sometimes in chat are not going to be as effective as if you just hop on the call with us. So Discord is the way to do it. Link's in the description. We're going to be over there in about 15, 20 minutes, and we'll see you then. Until then play that role. Here we go. Big shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for the support. You allow me to do all this crazy stuff that we get to do out here. And, uh, and I really do appreciate it. So yeah. Um, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if it's been, I, I hope everybody got the information they were looking for on the radio. I, I think that there were some things that, you know, when it came out, the battery thing, the, the message of that got spread like wildfire. And I'm, I'm not going to pretend that, yeah, you know, of course, if you have all the things on, the battery life's not going to be amazing. But if you just use it at the appropriate times, do you really need to be hiking in the wilderness and, and beaconing APRS with GPS on all the time? Probably not. Um, most of the time I have that turned off, particularly if I'm hiking, Bluetooth is off. That's one less thing that's killing the battery. And yeah, there's nothing really wrong with having a, a backup battery as well. Um, I will echo Don's sentiment though, that after he and I started talking, which was before Orlando, I did that, you know, at least eight full power drain power cycle and the battery life did go up. I can't necessarily quantify that to the tune of hours, but it's definitely better. 
And uh, I am looking forward to a firmware update that changes some of the stuff around, like the battery indicator, which would be really nice. Uh, yeah, so Mark, yeah, good point. Mark is is saying, you know, the FT5 doesn't last long. If you And this isn't a competition, guys. It, it's really not, but your, your point is sound. It's... It, it, it's a radio full of other radios, right? And and so if we expect like cell phone capability, which by the way, most of our cell phones don't even get through the day. So, eh, you know, I, I don't know how. You, if you want, if you want to go for la long lasting, then there's other ways you can do it. There's other radios you can pick up necessarily, but you can't get the functionality. There's no way you can get the functionality out of it that is included in the Kenwood. All right, guys, I'm gonna flip things around and get ready for the after chat. I hope you join us over there. And until I talk to you. 73s.